Hello guys, welcome to the video. I want to say a big shout out to all the comments and stuff on the video so far. I don't always get round to replying to them all, but I definitely do read them. I always see the, the regulars in the comments, I always remember your names, I know who you guys are, so big shout out to you guys, thanks a lot. So today I thought we could talk about loadouts for the spirit so far in this mare and just this mare in general. I haven't really found one solid build of the spirit yet. I'm still experimenting, I'm still going between perks and stuff. I've even been switching out Strider and just playing without Strider because uh, I feel like against some swift groups in this meta, it's very difficult to apply pressure when they're consistently hitting great skill checks, they're coordinating very well, and the spirit in general just suffers from mobility unless I have, uh, at the bare minimum, the considerable movement speed add-on. So I do feel like that green add-on is a must if you're playing against the swift group because you really need to get around a lot and try and keep people off gens because they are going to be coordinating extremely well and I think it is a lot harder to play against a swift with spirit in this matter now compared to the way it used to be where it was much more reliant on ruin and you would you know force people into searching for ruin while applying pressure and downing people and hooking them and etc uh, forcing them to come and rescue and things like that so that's why i've been running things like pop fanatophobia sloppy butcher corrupt convention just try and funnel them into one side of the map so i can just quickly go from one to another while they're in a certain area i haven't even been using save the best for last really because i feel like the seconds that it shaves off even though you could probably potentially down the person instantly from full health if you get into the right situation i mean you would need eight stacks for that anyway and then with the 110 movement speed still a bit iffy like save the best for last is probably a little bit better on killers that actually have a hundred and fifteen percent movement speed because they can actually catch up a lot quicker i mean of course i can phase at someone but if they're going towards a pallet or a window it's still going to be potentially the same scenario even without it right depending on how far it is but we're only talking like very marginal maybe like between one and three or four seconds so eh, does it really matter probably not it's more about positioning and where all the other survivors are on the map and just generally what is happening in game but even then like save the best for last can be pretty good in a lot of situations especially if there's a lot of survivors around right and then you run into the issue of what happens if you find the obsession first or the obsession keeps coming into your chases or you can you know you end up finding this person a lot you end up losing all your stacks right that is quite a big issue because realistically in a real game you're going to need every single perk slot for spirit unless you're playing a bunch of potatoes where you could probably run any perk or you probably wouldn't even need to run perks if they all just run in straight lines just beeline and it's an easy game right and i've played rank one matches where people have done that because they're so utterly clueless when they come to face spirit it's it's not even fun to play like the, the matches I really enjoy playing is the people that actually try and they're the people that actually end up juking me in the first place because I definitely get juked this spirit. It is a thing, especially now with that collision change, it is a lot easier. But you always get those people that are so scared of things that they don't understand so they just don't even try. They're just like, oh it's a spirit, well fuck it, I might as just die first hook, you know? I'm pretty sure I'm like the only person in the community right now that actually wants to go out their way to place against spirit because <laughs> every time I play survivor I always hope to play against spirit rather than uh, hillbilly or nurse or huntress because I know how this killer works and I know that this character is definitely counterable to a good degree. I definitely think a Huntress or a Nurse or even a Hillbilly, especially Hillbilly, have a way better potential to snowball. I think people are forgetting that Spirit has to hit you twice to take you down. And how you get hit initially to begin with to go to injured state, 
That is the most important part right there on how to count the spirit. Is making sure you don't get hit in a dumb way to begin with. So that she can start tracking you in order to get that second hit where you go down to dying state, right? Now, of course, when you go to injured state, you can produce more sound. And if you have iron will, it cloaks that. And it gives you a way, way better chance of surviving. And if you're at a jungle gym or you're at a decent loop area, you can quite easily juke the spirit with Iron Will if she doesn't have Strido. I, to be honest, if you have Iron Will and you're up against the spirit without Strider, you shouldn't even be getting caught. If you are, then I think you need to learn how to count the spirit. And this is on a very basic level because it's not very difficult to do if you've got Iron Will. I mean, for the most part, not in every situation, you just simply turn around, walk back the way you came when you hear the phasing sound, and then start running when you hear a reappear. But I'm not going to talk too much about countering spirit because, of course, I'm going to save this for another video. Uh, I felt like I kind of went off course a little bit here because I, it was supposed to be about loadouts and things, but I think, you know, I think it's getting to a point now where I should actually release a proper video on how to count a spirit because it's been like two years and I think people ought to know. Um, especially since I've played this character for a crazy amount of time. I think one of the main reasons I, I've been playing this character, or ever, ever since she came out, I knew that the moment she came out, this character was going to have so much potential. There was so many cool things you could do with her in the sense of Duke and a survivor. I think that is just really what stood out to me when she first came out, and I knew instantly she was going to be very, very good. And that was in the PTB. And you could hear her phasing within the terror radius and stuff like that. And I still thought that was fine because there was duke potential with the sound anyway. So it didn't really matter. But of course they changed that and, you know, they buffed her f like fucking crazily. And she was completely broken for like a year and then they fixed her. Mainly because of prayer beads, right? I think that was the main issue, was everybody hated prayer beads, and it was, it was the most stupidest add-on. I mean, right next to Iridescent Head, I think it was just retarded. Um, I knew the moment, oh, I still remember to this day, on the dev stream, when, I think it was Jeff from Behaviour, he was on the stream, and he told us that prayer beads was going to be silent. And I just, <laughs> I just sat there and I laughed. Because <laughs> I knew it was going to be so fucking retarded. <laughs> oh my god, I can't believe it's, it's been on for like a year. I just couldn't believe it, man. I'm sorry, but that, that, that was ridiculous. It was ridiculous. It was absolutely fucking ridiculous. <laughs> oh my god. Damn. One year of that, though. That was something. I think I still got like 70 odd prayer beads I haven't used. But generally, you know, Spirit is a lot easier to play against now than it was quite a while ago. I think people just need to stop being afraid to, to make a prediction and just go for it. If you're going to vault across a pallet, do it. Don't worry about getting caught. If you think, you know, if, if you see her go into phase, if you see her shards glow, or you hear the sound, just make a prediction and go with it. So I mean, if you go down, you go down, but if you don't, uh, you make the right read, then that's her power, you know, on cooldown, and then she's gonna have to wait, and she's gonna have to chase you with 110 movement speed, which is just, just sucks, in general, having that speed. But anyway, let's not go into talking about how to counter spread, because I do want to save that for another video. Uh, when I make the proper guide, which should be hopefully soon. I don't want to say in the next couple of days, but I just, I hopefully I can do it soon, right? But yeah, getting back on topic, I just want to talk about, you know, I still haven't really found a build at the moment. I have been using Sloppy Butcher and Fanatophobia with Strider, Corrupt Intervention, and just trying to pressure by slugging a bit more, trying to bait survivors towards me, cut them off, and just making predictions on where people are. And if it doesn't really work out, uh, then it doesn't, you know? Um, but yeah, I'm just gonna say I haven't really found a build at the moment, but once I find a really, really consistent build for this bear, I'll definitely let you guys know. But yeah, that's it guys. If you enjoyed the video, 
be sure to give it a like and all that good stuff and thanks for watching appreciate all the comments guys i do read them and i hope you enjoyed the gameplay as well because i've got a ton of gameplay on my hard drive i thought i'd just slap it all onto this video and hopefully you guys enjoyed it all right see you around guys